Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Protect us by your strength and save us from the threatening dangers of our sins. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for your only Son. By his coming, give us strength in our conflicts and shed light on our path through the darkness of this world. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the hindrance of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem.
first lesson is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, beginning at verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from the 11th chapter of Isaiah, beginning at verse 1. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. 
He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. Waste shall be girdled. 
The third lesson is from the first chapter of Luke, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. The fourth lesson is from the second chapter of Luke, beginning at verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. 
While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Thanks be to God. Would you please join with me in prayer and let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, on this most silent and holy night, your world and our celebrations look a little different. And so we ask you, enter our hearts now in a new way. Unmask and unleash your love on us today. 
Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may all of the grace and peace and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you this day. Amen. On Monday, December 21st, there was an event that was not seen for 800 years. Jupiter and Saturn in, in near perfect alignment called the Christmas star. Huge light, beautiful light. And if ever this world in our lifetimes needed light, it is now. For light and hope seemingly resided behind a mask for at least these last nine months. Masked, you know? It, usually, before this year, wearing a mask meant you were cold or you had something to hide. I mean, think back in January, February. Could you imagine wearing a mask and gloves and walking into a bank and demanding cold, hard cash? We'd never even think of something like that before. Or have, have any of you done this? I've done this way too many times, either in a store or um, out, out somewhere. And I, and I think that I recognize someone, you know, see their eyes and, and whatnot. And I say, hello, I walk up, start a conversation and made complete fool out of myself so many times. You know, they, they look at you with this incredulous look. They, they do not smize, right? It, the smiling with, we're supposed to smile with our eyes. They, they're looking at me like, man, who would have guessed? Who would have guessed that such a little thing could make such a huge impact? It's Christmas. Same thing. Such a small thing makes a huge impact. And, and, and there were things in that first Christmas and even today that we refuse to see, we don't recognize. It's as if God was masked in this manger. Not that God had anything to hide, Maybe the baby was cold. But the world so often will not see it. Can you imagine that first Christmas? This does not look like a Messiah. And absolutely, this does not look like a God, not the Almighty, not the Divine, not the Ancient of Days. This is just one more impoverished couple from a podunk backwater town simple to overlook, even easier to dismiss. God, here, this way, must be behind a mask. Yet, here is the divine. You know, and that really didn't change much for Jesus throughout his lifetime. His divinity seemingly hidden, buried, unrecognized, and finally shrouded on a lonely cross on a hill called the Skull, crucified an innocent man for the guilt of all others. Now, I, I suppose, I suppose that if God decided to enter the world in a different fashion, none of this would look the same, and likely it would not be good for us. You know, if God said, you know, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it with power and riches and might, you know, that would be maybe what we would expect. But it's as if God says, if I, do with this if I do this with power, you'll abuse it. If I do this with riches, you'll worship it. 
If I do this with might, you'll only use it for yourself and not for the good of my creation. Christmas shows us what God does for us beyond what we can do for ourselves. This far surpasses and outshines even, even our attempts to do something for God. God does it for us. This child, this child brings and reveals what God knows that we need and not as we might see it. God does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. You know, we try. From the dawn of time, we've tried, and we look for the wrong things. And we put on all kinds of masks. What are those things? I mean, think of all the things that we mask. I, I look at what's happening in, in our world, our country today. Substance abuse, bad drugs out there, binge drinking way up in recent months. As our loneliness, depression. And it seems like suicide is out of control in our community. And for those who suffer, it seems they suffered with not a hint, not a clue that anything was wrong. We mask ourselves so as not to reveal the truth of our condition. It's still, God knows. And God did something about it. And God is here for us to see and experience and, and rest securely in divine love. It's out there. It's out there for us to see and experience, if we will. I saw this in, in a couple different ways recently. And the first, the first was with our confirmation kids, seventh grade. Remember what you were thinking about in seventh grade? Seventh grade kids, they wanted to know why did God send COVID? And the question we all have, they were asking it at 12 and 13 years old, why do bad things happen to good people? And we talked. They're wise beyond what their years would say. Masks came off for a little bit. And we saw the light of the divine shining in. I saw it again the other day. I was at the clinic, had an appointment. And the nurse takes me back to the room, all that. And I, I'm not sure why. I was in a mood. Anyone ever been in a mood? And the nurse was chatty. Normally, this would be wonderful. She's chatting about anything and everything except for my visit right now. And I'm, I'm in a mood. So I'm thinking... Oh, good Lord, we got to talk her. And then, as the visit continued, she noticed a little bracelet that I wear. And she asked me about it. She said, well, that's kind of cool. And I said, well, thank you. I said, it belongs to my son. And he's off on another adventure for a few months, and I like to wear it when he's off on these travels. And there was an audible gasp. Silence. She said, I lost my son this summer. My only son. He too liked to go on adventures. My daughter said that now we have to think we have to think about it this way, that he's off on another great adventure. And she told me, she said, at his funeral, one of his best friends made a bracelet for him, for her, 
matching ones for a few others. About the time she told me this, I'm, I'm feeling about that big, right? I was in a mood. I thought, God, you did it to me again. I'm in a mood thinking only of myself, and you present this opportunity to both share and receive divine love. A love that entered this world as a child. Our world's been in a mood this year. And it places this shroud and this covering over, over God who is revealed in things great and small. Yet there is some unmasking of some truths that I think we're starting to realize. One, that we're unmasking the truth that maybe some, but maybe not enough people realize that Nurses, healthcare workers, all of those on the front lines, teachers, first responders, they're the true heroes. It's also recently we're starting to unmask the truth that in our deepest pain or in our greatest joy, Christ is with us. That unra- unmasking the truth that regardless of dark places that threaten the, the light of this holy night shines through. For this is about God revealed in flesh and bone. Child. Who didn't look like what we would expect. And whom the world still so often believes is just behind a mask, like the Wizard of Oz, just the one behind the curtain pulling some strings. This is the way God chose to do it. And comes to us in love of the holiest kind. We find that uh, it's refreshing, right? When we're unmasked for a bit, isn't it? I think so. And maybe you've done this too. I've I've bought uh, probably more than my share of masks online this year. You know, trying to find the right one that doesn't fog up the glasses, that fits the nose right on the ears and doesn't slide around. Some are okay and some are real, real bad ones. But see, that's, that's it, and I'm starting to discover, in, in, in doing some Christmas shopping too, the problem with shopping online is this. Can't touch it. Can't feel it. You can't try it on. Christmas brings God in and to humanity, touch, to feel, maybe even try it on. Christmas brings God to us, not not in a little icon to click on, or a thumbnail, or that quick view picture on a website, but here, now, always, for us come across a bit of a almost a poem it's 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 written as a christmas letter from jesus i found it a good reminder maybe you will too it says when you look for me at christmas you won't need a special star i'm no longer just in bethlehem I'm right here where you are. You may not be aware of me amid the celebrations. You'll have to look beyond the stores and all the decorations. But if you take a moment from your list of things to do, 
to close your eyes and say a prayer. I'm waiting here for you. You're the one I want to be with. You're the reason that I came. And you'll find me in the stillness when I am whispering your name. Your name. While we remain masked, and for good reason, God born as Bethlehem's child is not. And for us, then, the Spirit opens our eyes to see and our hearts to receive. Because you see, even with muffled voices, we can still sing God's praise. The light and hope of this child cannot, will not be masked. The light has and does and will shine, and more intensely than any star or any celestial alignment. May that be hope for you today. For unto us is born this day city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This one will not be hidden away. Amen. Merry Christmas to you all. Oh
Merry Christmas. Welcome to everyone from Olivet Lutheran Church here. We pray that this time of worship is truly a, a blessing for you on this Christmas. A warm welcome to everyone near and far. For some information about Olivet, you can check our Facebook page as well as our website, olivet.org, where you can also sign up to receive our weekly emblem via email. Lots of news and information uh, each and every week. Regularly, we worship now online at 10 a.m. on Sundays and 545 on Wednesdays as well. Please join us for those times of worship as well. Uh, uh, many thank yous today. A special thank you for everyone who has made our annual Christmas Eve dinner possible. Certainly looks a lot different this year, but we are still able to feed about 1,200 people this year, provide them with some gift cards and gifts. So thank you to everyone who participates to bring some Christmas cheer to this world. Thank you. We are also very grateful for all of you who contribute to the mission and ministry of this congregation in so many ways. And for those who contribute financially, thank you as well. Um, in this, this time, we can contribute in a variety of different ways by mailing our checks in, by going to our donation page on our website, or going to our mobile app. So again, a thank you to everyone who contributes in every fashion. A special thank you again to all of our musicians and everyone who makes this service possible. We are grateful that we can bring our gifts and talents together and share in this way. So now as we prepare our hearts for prayer, please take a moment and share the peace of Christmas with those whom you're worshiping today. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Let us pray. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The angels sing, peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire world leaders to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Be with those who serve in the military and continue to be with those battling COVID and all frontline workers as you renew their strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mary sings melodies to comfort her newborn child, bring rest and reassurance to all those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers, those staying at home, and those without homes. Be with those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick, hurting, or grieving and bring about your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you care for your children in this and every place. Grant relief to those in fear, shelter to the homeless, community to the isolated, joy to expectant parents, relief to those who yearn for children, and blessings to our Christmas Eve dinner guests in the various places it is being served tonight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heavenly chorus sings glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night 
in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all prayers to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The fifth lesson from John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Word of God.
Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.